Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, in an ideal world, you would expect journalists, people who are reporting on supposed facts, to be some of the most informed, well-researched, intelligent individuals. But that's in an ideal world. In the real world, let me ask you, do you think that's the way that it plays out? Well, very simply, no, not even close. We see time and time again that mainstream journalists are some of the most flawed, lazy, unintelligent, incompetent, partisan actors. It's a bunch of people who are part of this weird elitist cult who just all promote the exact same narrative without a single thought. And boy, do we have a cringy moment that proves that exact point. Barry Weiss, an individual responsible with disseminating the Twitter files. Some people are unaware of who she is, but she's a left-wing mainstream media journalist who used to work with the New York Times. She left her post there due to ethical reasons and made it public, which, of course, good on her. But she is still a shining beacon, a shining example of everything that's wrong with the mainstream media. Everything that's wrong with these mainstream corporate journalists who just don't do any basic research. They take the mainstream narrative, whatever all of their friends in the media are saying at fancy New York cocktail parties, and just repeats it verbatim, without even a thought. And when challenged, well, you start to see the truth. These supposed experts become stuttering messes, tripping all over themselves, unable to actually articulate the reasoning and logic behind their statements. Yet they state them as facts. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean in this embarrassing moment for Barry Weiss and by extension the mainstream media on the Joe Rogan podcast we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape. Alright folks so who is Barry Weiss exactly? Well according to her website Barry Weiss is a journalist and author. Barry Weiss is the founder and editor of the free press and host of the podcast Honestly. From 2017 to 2020 Weiss was an opinion writer and editor at the New York Times before that she was an op-ed and book review editor at the Wall Street Journal and a senior editor at Tablet Magazine. Weiss is the winner of the LA Press Club Club's 2021 Daniel Pearl Award for Courage and Integrity in Journalism. She is also the winner of the Reason Foundation's 2018 Bestiate Prize, which honors writing that the best demonstrates the importance of freedom with originality, wit, and eloquence. In 2019, Vanity Fair called Weiss the Times' star opinion writer. In other words, Barry Weiss is an award-winning journalist, the epitome of journalistic ethics and integrity. That's what mainstream institutions would have you believe or would want you to believe, but in reality, this is who Barry Weiss is. Kristen Tulsi Gillibrand. Oh, monstrous. Monstrous? <laughs> ideas. Ideas. Well, when she was 22, she had... No, she's an Assad toady. What does that mean? She is What's a... What's a toady? I think that I used that word correctly. Jamie, can you check what toady means? Like toeing the line? Is that what it means? No, I think it's like a... T-O-A-D-I-E. What does that mean? I think it means what I think it means. Yeah, there you go. Toady. Definition of toadies. A person a who flatters yeah. or defers to others for self-serving right. reasons. A sycophant. So she's an Assad sycophant. My, Is that what you're saying? My, yeah, that's pro that's known about her. Like what did she say that, that oh, we have qualifies to look, her? I don't, I don't remember the details. I probably should say that before we say that about or we should probably read it rather well i have read it no i mean I we just, should right oh, now oh yeah okay just so we know what she said look I, up i've Tulsi had her on Gabbard. here before look up i really Tul enjoy talking to her i like her a lot are you serious yeah i like talking to her okay i like okay. talking to her i don't know about i think she's like the mother load of bad ideas whoa i'm pretty positive about that especially on assad but maybe i'm wrong i don't think i'm wrong <laughs> How cringe is that? That is supposedly the best the mainstream media can offer. And you see what I mean by it's a cult of people just repeating the same nonsense over and over again. She didn't even know or understand the definition of the word that she was using. You know why? Because that wasn't an original thought. That was a mere repetition of what she heard other journalists and other left-wing New York and Los Angeles hacks saying around her. And so she merely packaged the talking point and reiterated it. And Joe Rogan, who's actually friends with Tulsi Gabbard, who enjoys speaking with Tulsi Gabbard, who has had her on his show, clearly was going to challenge her on that issue. And when challenged, you see exactly how clueless these people are. I mean, that was a political talking point. In fact, that's a Kamala Harris talking point. 
point. When Kamala Harris's back was against the wall during the 2022 Democrat nomination process, in that epic, fiery moment when Tulsi Gabbard absolutely mopped the floor with her and basically ended her presidential run, Kamala Harris's response to Tulsi Gabbard wasn't in response to her awful prosecutorial record, but was a cheap political deflection of, you're an Assad stooge, you're friends with Assad. And freaking Pete Buttigieg tried doing basically the exact same thing. One of the foreign leaders you mentioned meeting was Bashar al-Assad. I have, in my experience, such as it is, whether you think it counts or not since it wasn't accumulated in Washington, enough judgment that I would not have sat down with a murderous dictator like that. Congresswoman Gabbard, let me allow you to respond. Thank you. You were asked directly whether you would send our troops to Mexico to fight cartels, and your answer was yes. The fact checkers can check this out. No. But your point about judgment is absolutely correct. Our commander in chief does need to have good judgment. And what you've just pointed out is that you would lack the courage to meet with both adversaries and friends to ensure the peace and national security of our nation. I take the example of those leaders who have come before us, leaders like JFK, who met with Khrushchev, like Roosevelt, who met with Stalin, like, Donald like Trump, Reagan, who met... I mean, Tulsi Gabbard on multiple occasions has absolutely destroyed this talking point. Yet these Democrat parrots in the media just chirp along over and over again, repeating it without an actual coherent argument as to why what Tulsi Gabbard did was bad in the first place. And really, here's a great question. What exactly did Tulsi Gabbard do? What is this terrible action that she took, supposedly siding with vicious dictators? Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard often talks about her January 2017 trip to Syria when she met Bashar Bashar al-Assad, and toured Aleppo after it had been reduced to rubble by the Assad regime, and interviewed Syrian civilians in the regime-approved, quote, opposition, who unanimously told her Assad was a better option for Syria than the terrorists. So she took a diplomatic trip to Syria and was open to listening to the Assad regime and what they had to say. That's literally it. And that's somehow a massive scandal that makes her pro-Assad, even though Tulsi Gabbard is literally on the record, explicitly stating that Bashar al-Assad is a, quote, brutal dictator. It's just the difference in foreign policy view and diplomacy. You know, Pete Buttigieg's little dig there at the end, his little stab, where he basically compares Tulsi Gabbard's trip or her perspective to Donald Trump's approach to Kim Jong-un and the communist dictator state of North Korea. Well, my immediate question is, why exactly is that a bad thing? Donald Trump achieved historic success in North Korea through real diplomacy. You know, Tulsi Gabbard made a great point on the Tucker Carlson show, which I'll use to further make my point. It's, it was meeting with Assad, which I thought was great. I mean, I don't, you know, Assad, whatever, I'm not endorsing Assad, but he did protect religious minorities, including Christians. I'm a Christian. Christian leaders yes. in the region say that. You have a right to make that point. They haven't let you make that point or any point. They just dismiss you because of that. It, well, I, we don't have much time, but I'm just interested, like, why, what is that about? It's bizarre. It, it is, it is a, a dangerous situation that we are in that so many people here in Washington who are part of this powerful elite who have this stranglehold over the foreign policy establishment are so afraid of diplomacy and they cast out people like me who are calling for a foreign policy yes. focused on cooperation and diplomacy rather than confrontation uh, as something weird or bad or to, to be suspicious of. When you look at so many leaders throughout our country's history who have made those tough yep. decisions to exercise diplomacy to prevent our country from unnecessarily going to war. It's a difference in foreign policy view is exactly what it is. A difference in diplomacy. The Donald Trump view, the Tulsi Gabbard view, is that whether or not they're your enemies, you should bring them to the table. Clearly, regime change and war hasn't worked. And so maybe decent working relationships, a positive working relationship is better than mass casualties and terrible atrocities. That's the view. Diplomacy. Getting to the table and making deals. But of course, the uniparty regime's view is no compromise, spending billions of American dollars on endless wars, funding conflict, taking hardline stances, just like we're seeing, by the way, in Ukraine with Russia right now, and creating scenarios that lead to the loss of lives in the tens of thousands, many of which innocent civilians. And this is essentially the stance that Barry Weiss is taking, the establishment view, merely parroting it. 
not questioning it, in fact not much thought in general at all, being completely unaware of even the words that she's using, or being completely unable to bring up any actual examples as to why Tulsi Gabbard is supposedly this terrible, evil human being who's essentially a traitor operating in American government, or previously operating in American government, and Barry Weiss is the perfect example of overly educated, unintelligent journalists who are part of the establishment elitist cult who don't actually think, who merely promote the narrative without thought, and then get handed all kinds of fancy prizes and brought on as expert guests merely because they're useful idiots, stooges, who promote the approved uniparty regime narrative. That's basically the point of the video, just a viral clip that I thought we should talk about. That's what I got for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you guys are up for it. I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.